Are you ready to stand out in the competitive field of educational leadership? What if I told you that getting the job was more than just your experience, but also how you demonstrated yourself and your skills on paper? In today's episode, we're going to share three strategies to help you write a rock solid resume. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey, everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. On this channel, we help leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episodes. Hey, everybody. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're, we're talking about resumes. We're talking about how to help you secure your next educational leadership job. Uh, but it took me back and I was thinking about recording this today, thinking about my own personal experiences. And I think it's important to kind of share some of our journeys because it helps connect with you and maybe what you're going through as you're contemplating, you're thinking about what to do next and where you want to head next and what opportunities you want to explore. So I'll take you back to 2005, maybe. Um, no, actually, maybe it was even earlier than that. But nevertheless, uh, I was living the best life. I was teaching. I was coaching. I was doing all kinds of fun stuff as a young up and coming education professional. Uh, and one evening I was walking by the principal's office after I'd finished practice and I went back into my classroom. I was setting my classroom up for the next day of lab demonstrations. And as I walked by, her office door was open. And she, as I get past, she literally kind of hollers, Emerson, get in here. So in the moment I was kind of a little bit panicking, like, oh, what did I, what did I get mess? What did I mess up? I'm getting called into the principal's office. Uh, and so I walked in and she officially looked at her and, uh, she's looking at me over the top of her glasses and she says to me, you're going to be a really good assistant principal. And in the moment I was absolutely taken aback because I'd never thought about being an educational leader. I already knew I was an educational leader because I was leading kids, leading scholars and building programs and building teams. And so I knew I was already a leader. Uh, she talked about this formal leadership opportunity uh, and that lit a fire in me. And so whatever your experience has been, whatever opportunities that have been put in front of you or opportunities you don't know yet are around the corner for you, be open, be ready, be, be open to the opportunity that you might get a shoulder tap, you might come across something, you might get a phone call. Somebody may see something in you that you may not see in yourself yet. And because of that interaction, that fleeting moment of an interaction all those years ago, uh, from classroom teacher to assistant principal to principal to director to assistant superintendent and superintendent, and, and we go on and we're growing and we're continuing to do fun stuff and I'm enjoying every moment of it. And so as you think about entering the leadership space, you think about your experience, but tying it to what we're talking about today, it's about how do you also convey who you are and your leadership experiences and the opportunities that you've learned and grown around in the education field, how you convey that on a piece of paper. How do you, how do you structure that? How do you put it in place? So that way it helps people lean in when they start to read who you are, what you bring to the table, what you offer. How do you get people to lean in and say, okay, this one I'm going to put in this pile because we've got to interview this person. This is the next assistant principal. This is the next principal. This is the next director. Well, we're going to talk about some different ways to look at structuring your resume that will help you uh, stand out. And so let's uh, jump in and we're going to start with strategy number one. All right. So strategy number one, it's all about how do you strategically structure and organize the resume? There are lots of different ways to do this. And so this this episode is not about telling you what is the right structure, but to give you some ideas, to give you some guideposts, to give you some thoughts around it, because you may want to organize it and structure it in a very specific way that fits where you are in your career, what you want to most notably highlight. But I will tell you that there's important pieces that you want to keep in mind. The first thing you want to keep in mind is you want to be detail oriented. You want to be outcome driven and you want to have your experiences, the things that you highlight, the structures that you choose, the things that you choose to structure and put at the top of the resume, 
that is strategically a place that's like almost like the newspaper. It's above the fold. And so it's what's going to grab everybody's attention right away. You want to lead with the most powerful and the most compelling things about you in that particular space. If that's your education, then highlight your education. If that is your current experience, then highlight your current experience. If that is your mission and vision and educational philosophy statement that captures who you are and you believe that is the thing that highlights and typifies who you are that you would want people to be drawn to first, then structure that and put that there. But you wanna be strategic about what you lead with and how you amplify things based on very, very clear outcomes, very, very clear increasing levels of responsibility, increasing levels of accountability. Because when we're talking about an educational leadership position, it's always gonna be about getting results. And how do we know that you will be able to get results for us as an educational leader? By you demonstrating previous results that you've already achieved, previous successes that you've already experienced. And so thinking about how you organize that, how you structure it, and then also thinking secondarily about strategic placement of information is if you know the job that you're applying for, if the job that you are really, really excited about exploring, if they have a specific area of focus, a specific area that they are very, very passionate about, how do you weave your current experience into that to highlight, number one, you've done your research around the organization, but also that you have the skills, the knowledge and the attributes and the experience to be able to immediately come in and support their mission of innovation, dual language immersion, right? Expanding and developing career technical education programs and platforms. All of those things, if you know that that's something that the organization is passionate about, you wanna figure out strategic ways to layer that in. Lastly, in this area of strategically organizing your, your resume and, it, and the layout is be subtle about use of color, be subtle about use of highlights. Um, it's You're talking about entering the field of educational leadership, so it is very much management leadership. So being more reserved in the design and the layout, focusing more on who you are and what you can deliver as opposed to taking creative license in the way you design or you format um, or you border or highlight what your resume is. Highlight who you are and what you've done. Focus on that. Layer in strategically what you know that the organization is really, really passionate around and put your best foot forward in this very first structure, uh, section because that's what strategically organizing the resume is all about. All right, so that's strategy number one. All right, let's move to strategy number two. And strategy number two is all about building your leadership narrative. How do you showcase and demonstrate increasing levels of responsibility, increasing levels of accountability, and increasing levels of expertise and experience that can showcase, highlight, and support the organization that you're uh, applying for, the organization that you want to be an educational leadership member with? So how do you highlight your experiences kind of in that progressive timeline? And what bullet points, what experiences, and what specific things should you highlight? And so thinking about, number one, from a very technical standpoint, all of your previous jobs, all the bullet points that you want to highlight, keep them in the proper tense. Those are past experiences, and so the action verbs that lead each of those bullet points should be in the past tense. I led, I directed, I assisted, I created. Keeping things, because it's, it's, a, it's a small, but it's a very technical piece, but it also uh, is the attention to detail that quite frankly is really important when you're an educational leader and you're responsible for the things that you write, the things that you communicate, the things that you disseminate uh, are gonna be scrutinized. And so your attention to detail and knowing how to properly lay out information to be consumed by other parties is a really important skill to be able to highlight. Again, demonstrating your level of expertise um, during your resume and on your resume in written form. So how do you lay those things out? Past experiences, prop, keeping those in the proper tense, and then highlighting as you continue to grow and develop those increasing levels of responsibility until you get to your current job. Now, when you get to your current job, this is really where you wanna highlight what you're doing right now 
and how what you're doing right now is absolutely going to meet the needs and the options and the opportunities that the organization is looking for currently. So what are you currently working on now? Again, now we're moving to your current job. You're in your current tense. It's the current tense. I am currently leading. I am currently directing. I am currently analyzing, right? If you have responsibility for building the master schedule for a school site, if you have responsibility for leading the uh, math department or the third grade, te- uh, the third grade level team, if you are responsible for developing common formative assessments for a department, if you are uh, currently supporting the scholars in a specific program or for a specific club, thinking about how you do that and then demonstrating again, using data, using evidence and using outcome-based language is a really important piece as you build your leadership narrative. Because what we're always looking for is evidence and information that shows and demonstrates your ability to execute, your ability to close and, and, and do the things necessary to advance the organization. Okay. And so how you think about how you build that leadership narrative, be comprehensive. If, if every job you've had builds on your ability to execute on the current job description, the current goals, the current things that the organization that you're applying for if it meets all of that, then be comprehensive. List all of those jobs out with all the timelines and all the responsibilities and all the things that you've executed on. But if it doesn't help to move your leadership narrative forward, I would strategically advise you to leave it out. Right? In some cases, less is more. Right? Highlight what needs to be highlighted, amplify what needs to be amplified, and strategically abandon what doesn't need to. That will help you build your leadership narrative, and that is strategy number All right, everybody, before we move to strategy number three, uh, thinking about strategic structuring of your of your resume, as well as how you build your leadership narrative, share with us in the comments below what section or what portion of your resume presents the biggest challenge for you as you think about preparing, as you think about drafting and writing it, creating it, updating it. What section gives you the most trouble? Share with that. uh, Share that with us in the comments below and we'll provide some tips and some support. Uh, for you in that area. So share that in the comments below and we're gonna move to strategy number three. All right, strategy number three. And this builds off of strategy one and two. Um, We've talked a little bit about it. Now we're gonna talk about it a little bit more directly. Strategy number three is evidence-based accomplishments. Using quantifiable information, data, metrics, measurements, key performance indicators. Using those, incorporating those into your resume it brings a certain level of clarity. It brings a certain level of um, rigor, relevance. Uh, it brings a certain level of, of validation that you can do the job. Because if we see evidence that you've done it before, we can reasonably think or potentially expect that you could replicate, build those same types of results, get those same types of outcomes when working with us as well. So how do you build that? How do you layer that in? You do your research. You think about the key work that you've done over time. You go back through and you think about how you've built those assessments, how you've built those outcomes, how you got those results, and you quantify them. If it's a percent, write up those percents. If it is a number of students, if it is a number of participants, whatever that is, but use quantifiable data. Because that evidence-based accomplishment really brings a level of gravitas to your to your resume. No longer are you talking about it in abstract terms. You're talking about it in very real terms, tangible real terms that we, as we assess resumes, as we assess cover letters, as we put candidates in, in bands or in tiers to think about who are our top tier candidates, second tiered candidates, we will look at data and evidence and data and evidence and metrics that you tie to where those outcomes came from that we can go back, verify and validate really brings a high level of accountability. It develops some trustworthiness in that what you're demonstrating and showing us is verifiable. And all those things lead to your increased credibility, showing your increased ability to be a trustworthy 
leader because one of the key components of being an educational leader is somebody who can move and influence and a lot of that movement and influence of a school community is based on trust and reliability. And so when we show evidence-based outcomes, when we show evidence-based accountability and that we can do our work and drive our work through getting uh, results and, and achieving outcomes, then we bring a lot of, again, trustworthiness and a lot of relationship building to our ability to demonstrate on paper, which increases our opportunities to potentially get moved into the must interview pile and then be able to demonstrate in person to people that we are who we, so who they think we are on paper, we're able to connect and validate that once we're in the room. And so when we think about when we move ourselves from just the written resume, but we actually get into the seat into an educational leadership interview opportunity, that's where this next video right here is going to help and assist you. So as we think about being able to move forward and give you support and resources to nurture you along your educational leadership journey, this next episode is going to help you get ready for the interview and crush the interview for your next leadership position. So check this one out and we're going to see you on our next episode. Thank you so much and we'll see you again soon. Be well, everyone. Check this next video out.